So you're excited about making the color kaleidoscope poncho, but you don't know what colors to choose. Let your bi crafty bestie help you. Let's go. Show me Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video we will discuss how to choose the colors for your color kaleidoscope poncho. Now you can see here in the sample, look at how great this is, I used nine different colors. Nine different colors you guys and I loved every single minute of it. But I know that choosing colors can be really daunting and super scary. But don't worry, I have a trick for you. Part of the benefit of doing a knit along with the designer is that I get to give you some little extra tips and stuff along the way. And this is the biggest one. You guys ready for this? Okay. In the video description box right down there below, you're going to see a link to a blog post on my website. That link is going to take you to where you can get the link to the stitch fiddle I'm about to show you. All right. This is Stitch Fiddle, you guys. This is what you will see when you click the link to view the chart for the Color Kaleidoscope Poncho. Here's the benefit of knowing this. Whether you have a paid premium account with Stitch Fiddle or it's free, we will be able to change our color palette over here to the left. And when you change that color palette, it will directly change the colors on the chart. Okay, so here's the first thing you're going to do. Once you click that link, go to file. And when you go to file, come down here to create a copy, click on create a copy. And you'll see this pops up, go ahead and name this whatever you want, like name, let's just put this I'm going to put in here sample of color palette, and I'm going to say alt, alt nine colors. Okay, so we're going to pick the, the nine original colors. I'm going to put this in a folder, which I can do because I have a premium account and I'm going to click next. What this does is it opens a brand new chart and it will put it into your own account. So that way, as we come in here and change our color palette, it will be in your own account. All right. So now, now that we have everything on our own here, here's the next thing. We're going to go to edit and we're going to come to colors and symbols. We're going to select on that. This is where you can see all of the original colors I used in this poncho. Okay. All of these colors are here from my main color and then working all the way down. So this is color A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. All right. So great thing about Stitch Fiddle is it already has all of the Peyton's classic wool worsted colors programmed into it. So here's what we're going to do. Let's say you want a different main color. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to double click on this blue. When I did that, it opens up the edit yarn color page and you can see here it's showing the blue. It says Peyton's classic wool color um, indigo. The yarn, this is where we, we want this. We want the Peyton's classic wool worsted yarn. And if you click in here, you can see there's other yarns available, but this is the one we're choosing for our pronto, right? Now I'm going to come down here and these are all of the colors that are available in this yarn. So say you already know that you want your main color to be this coral peach. I'm going to select co coral peach. I clicked it. I come to apply, click apply. Now you'll see that coral peach is now up here in the place of indigo and anywhere on my chart where there was indigo, it is now coral peach. Now clearly this does not show the main color being used up here at the top, right? It doesn't show it being used down here at the bottom with the ribbing and it doesn't show the main color in the increase rounds between each of the charts. But this gives you a really good idea of what it would look like in, in the actual chart itself. So I'm going to shrink this chart down so that way we can get a full idea because there are eight different, different charts here. There are eight different charts and we can quickly see, okay, wherever there was the indigo, you can see you have that coral color. It doesn't look so bad. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that. So that coral peach doesn't look too bad at all, but what if we wanted to change something else? Like maybe we want to change the orange, maybe we don't want orange. So let's come back over here. We're going to edit colors and symbols and let's go to the pumpkin. So I'm going to double click on the pumpkin. It opens it up. 
And now let's say that we wanted a different color instead of the pumpkin. So, um, what if I wanted misty green? Uh, no, you know what? Pumpkin is just, that's a really, maybe scarlet. Let's go with scarlet. I'm going to click on scarlet and click apply. Now, wherever the pumpkin was, it's now scarlet. It's not that dramatic of a change, right? Because the scarlet is kind of in between the red and the orange, but it definitely gives a, a more subtle toned down look, right? It's not so bad. Um, let's say that instead of this really bright pop sprout color, we wanted something else, okay? So I'm gonna click edit, colors and symbols, double click sprout, and let's say I want another bright color because the sprout is really a pop color in there. So I wonder what the duck egg blue would look like. I wonder if it's too close to the sea foam. So I'm going to click it and see. Click apply. Now that's really close to the sea foam here. here you can see here. But are the sea foam and the duck egg used side by side? Well, you can see right down here in chart number two, they are pretty close. To me, that's really close. Um, however, I will say I like this duck, duck egg next to the teal. So maybe I change sea foam. So I'm going to come over here to the sea foam. And let's see, we want to colors and symbols. Go to the sea foam. I clicked it. And maybe we put the sea foam. Maybe we want more of a purple. Let's pick a purple. Ooh, let's go to soft orchid. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm going to click apply. Oh, that, jigs, that changes the look completely. Kind of a um, sunset sort of peak. Can you see here all the, the, you have the duck egg blue next to the soft orchid. And it just, it kind of looks great. It looks really good here at the bottom too. It's pretty fun, right? So the great thing here is that you can pick and choose through that entire palette of colors from the Peyton's Classic Wool and kind of mix and match and play around. The great thing here is you're getting a sneak peek at all of the charts you'll be doing in like weeks three and four as well as week two. And you get to see how all of those colors play together. Okay, now something I want to talk about is because I know not everybody wants to use nine colors. Maybe you want to use fewer colors. And there's a couple things you have to think about here. One, if you're using fewer colors, you're going to use more of each individual color. So you might need more of one or two colors, depending on which one you use more. The other thing is if you're going to condense down the number of colors you're going to use, you also have to pay attention to your charts because if I want to condense down my colors, let's say I want to condense down. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to colors and symbols. Let's say I don't want this brown mustard color. All right. So I'm going to click X and you'll see it makes it so that I can merge it with another color. And what that's going to do is all of the squares that have the brown mustard in it, it will then merge into whatever other color I choose. So I could choose to where it becomes a no stitch, which is not really, that's not a choice. You're not going to choose that. I can make it go to the Aran, the teal, the soft orchid. I could do any of these, but I'm going to choose the Aran. I'm just going to say, you know what? We're going to make everything that was the brown mustard that's now going to be the Aran color. So when I click merge, Look at that. It changes everything. You get a completely different look because the charts are no longer the same. Look up here, down here where it was those two colors, the, the mustard and the Aran were side by side. And now it took the place of the mustard. So now that chart doesn't even really work, right? It's just one color. Do you see what I'm saying here? Um, so if you're going to start condensing down and using a different color, you really want to pay attention to your charts. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to click my undo button and it put the brown mustard back. And now you can see, I mean, can you see the difference here? Look here at chart number four where the brown mustard is. And then of course, right here, um, I think this is chart number six. Um, you can see where the brown mustard is next to the Aaron and it looks really great. And then of course, down here at the last chart, they're side by side. So that's something you really want to pay attention to. The other thing is before you start condensing down and changing the number of colors you have, I would make a copy of this chart again. So that way you're making a copy 
label it instead of nine colors, label it five colors, seven colors, whatever you're going to do and play around with that. But um, I will tell you using nine colors, it's really exciting because there's a lot of color play that happens here. There's a lot of color play. Maybe you wanted to do things where it's more, more pinks, right? Let's just play with this for a second. I think a lot of you are like, I can't wait to get started. I want to go play with us on my own. I get it. So let's change the rich grass. Let's change it more of Let's come up here, search by color. We're gonna search more pink colors. How about that? So there's the amaranth and the rich raspberry we're already using. So let's kind of see, these are all the colors that are kind of in that hue. And hmm, there isn't really a whole lot of pink, is there? Let's see, if we go to blues, let's go to reds. All right, so we have the amaranth is a darker shade of the rich raspberry, but it's not enough difference, I don't think. So maybe pinks aren't really going to be our, our choice here. So maybe let's go here. So we have rich grass. Minty green is going to be too close to the robin's egg. Uh, maybe we go gray. Let's go gray mix. And I'm going to click that. So instead of the green, I now have gray. I love the teal, but maybe instead of the Aaron. Let's choose something in place of the Aaron. So let's go click the Aaron and maybe we do a dark gray. Let's do dark gray in place of the Aaron. Oh, look at that. That's definitely a moodier, deeper tone of all of the colors, um, especially with that coral in there. That looks really great. Um, part of me wonders if I changed this one, I'm going to change that. What was that? Is that scarlet? Yeah, the scarlet. Let's change the scarlet. Let's change that to something else. So scarlet. Um, maybe we ch we did the gray. We did natural. What if we did kind of this pan? So we're going to do pansy. It's like a deeper purple. Um, oh, I kind of like that. Look at that. The purple next to the, the uh, soft orchid here. Let's get some purple deep tones. I mean, there's some really nice colors happening here, but you can see, especially down here at the end, I mean, those are really rich, great colors. This is really lovely how this is looking up, but it's just, it's a lot of fun to play around with colors. Now, as I mentioned in the yarn selection area, if you wanted to try out one of the other yarns and play around with the colors that are available, um, you can see what other yarns are already listed uh, inside Stitch Fiddle with all of their colors, and you can kind of mess around in there. But this is a great way to play around with colors, choose a palette that works for you without having to like work up a swatch, right? Because we're getting a really great view of what the colors are going to look like together directly onto the chart. And this is only available on my website, guys. This is not attached to the pattern. This is a bonus for doing the knit along with me. So what you need to do now is go ahead, go to that link, like I said, mess around with the Stitch Fiddle, and then you wanna make sure that you register for the knit along so that way you get all of the different sections of instructions sent to your email um, starting September 21st. I hope this is really helpful, and I hope you really will consider getting the Stitch Fiddle Premium. I don't make any money off of it, you guys, but I will tell you, I use Stitch Fiddle all the time, and I find it so incredibly valuable, and I know that you will as well. I cannot wait to see your ponchos, you guys. As you're choosing your colors, make sure you share with me on social media. Use hashtag Marley Bird or hashtag Marley Made Me Do It. You could also use hashtag Kaleidoscope Cal or Color Kaleidoscope Cal. All of those will work. All right, I will see you guys very soon as we start this amazing poncho. I can't wait for this journey. And um, yeah, talk to you later. Bye. Show me love. Show me love.